I believe that it is time for all those who are calling themselves Seventh-day Adventist of the present generation to sincerely and earnestly investigate the um, church history and the church theology. Hello, thank you so much for joining me today in this serious conversation. Why did I ask all of you to investigate? Because those who are ignorant will just listen to what the Seventh-day Adventist leaders would say, and they would mimic or echo what the human instrumentalities of the conferences has to say, their policies and their directions. This is not from the Bible. Yes, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was once pure from 1844 until the uh, pioneers were able to establish their positions on certain biblical principles that are non-negotiable, that should not be changed, that should be permanent. It, that's why they call it fundamental principles, not beliefs. So why am I saying this? It's because the Seventh-day Adventist Church through the years, and it is available online, that you can verify the facts and the uh, dishonesties and the deceptions that are deliberately happening in the general conference level from uh, the time when Sister Ellen G. White died and the struggle continued until 1980 when the Trinitarians decided to take that vote through their leadership. And the church indeed had been changed. Mark the year 1980. Ronald Reagan was in power. Ted Neil Wilson, the cousin of Ronald Reagan, was in power in the Seventh-day Adventist. The history and the theology of the Seventh-day Adventist church had been changed to conform and confirm the similar trinity of Rome. And many millions of Seventh-day Adventists are so ignorant, we call it uh, dumbed or dummies, who do not know because they do not read. They assume the uh, talking points of the uh, conference leaders. How do I know? Because I used to be following and mimicking the talking points. So today, this is a serious matter. And so my two cents or my advice to Seventh-day Adventists like me, who had my life invested in the church, the whole generation of my life, I was in the church from being baptized to being an ordained minister. And so I know what I'm trying to tell you. And this is not out of hate, but this is out of love for truth. This is hating sin and loving truth. So my advice is for you to read carefully if you must read the whole entire Bible. Take your time. Read it like William Miller would read it, scripture with scripture, making notes. Stop all the uh, the uh, interpretations by the general conference. Stop all the opinions by the conference leaders or pastors. Stop listening to them. For once, read the Bible and study it carefully as you would study a final examination. This is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So this is my two cents in this conversation. For those only who are sincere, seeking the truth. If you are not sincere and you are not seeking the truth, you just like to argue, then this, is, this, this advice is not for you. You can defend the Seventh-day Adventist General Conference policy, procedure, governance. It will not affect the truth. The truth is the truth. The opinions of men will not impact the truth. If somebody like me, 
sincere and seeking truth will receive it. And so let us turn our attention to the Bible. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, beginning in verse 1, I read from Textus Receptus, the received text, a reliable English translation, King James Version. And after these things, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Verse number two. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Verse number three. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich, rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her, for, of her plagues. Verse number five. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Traditionally, Seventh-day Adventist preachers would deflect this as not referring to the Seventh-day Adventist church remnant today. They call themselves a remnant. But they would deflect this and detour this message to the Roman Catholic Church. But majority of the Seventh-day Adventist members do not know that the Roman Catholic Church worship of Trinity is the same as the Seventh-day Adventist worship of Trinity, or they call it Triangular Godhead, since 1980. It is a clear deception and a smokescreen because the seventh day keeps the true day of worship, which is Saturday, the Sabbath. But they did not realize that the Jews not only keep the Sabbath, the Jews were correct in believing in a literal one God. And, the, and Jesus calls that literal one God of the Jews as his father. The Seventh-day Adventists do not believe that Jesus is a real son of God. They think he's another God who disguises himself as the son, role-playing himself as the son, and was called only during the time of incarnation, son of God. So there is the clear delineation and deception going on in the minds of those who have not understood who have not who have not understand who have not studied who have not been seeking the truth and who have not comprehended this difficult deception that sticks into the leaves of truth that's why eve has a hard time understanding or eve was deceived because the devil inserted only one word, and that is, thou shalt not. The word not was inserted to the conversation. So the statement in Revelation 18 verses 1 to 5 is very clear, addressed to come out of her, my people. The pagans who were baptized into the papal Catholic Church is not God's people. But there are God's people sincerely and earnestly searching the truth inside the Roman Catholic Church who came out when reading the Bible and received the authority, not of the priest or of the pastors or of the minister or of the deacon or the servant of the churches, but the authority of the Spirit of God as they read and search the Bible. This is what happened actually to me. I reread everything that I know that I was taught and educated from the master's seminary to the doctoral seminary classes in Andrews University. And so I read it again. It took me a hard time to understand. But as I read every day, as I sincerely and, and earnestly seek the truth, I was able to come out and tell you my advice to come out of the Seventh-day Adventist corrupted system. Why did I say it's corrupted? The Seventh-day Adventist church was flooded by Trinitarians. 
One of them was Joe's, one of them was uh, John Harvey Kellogg, who returned to her Trinitarian leanings after he was rebuked by Ellen G. White of his theories that God is found in live in all living thing. And so this pantheistic theory did not uh, connect well with uh, John Harvey Kellogg because he was taught non-Trinitarian by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The year was 1903. And after that controversy, what we call the beginning of apostasy in the Seventh-day Adventist, John Harvey Kellogg clearly returned to believe in the Trinity of the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant churches because they have the sim same and similar teachings. So John Harvey Kellogg a medical doctor, leader of the uh, uh, missionary arm of the Seventh-day Adventist in 1903, accepted Trinity. Letter. We have a lot of letter. We have letters from Ellen G. White that uh, that uh, reference this uh, uh, this rebuke, and also from A. G. Daniels' letter, which is still extant until now. You can research it, and there are many videos produced to enlighten people. Yet, many Seventh-day Adventists will not take time because they are, they were beholden to their conference leaders. So they are blinded continuously every day for the past generation of apostasy in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I know it is hard. It was hard for me. The generation of the Seventh-day Adventist parallels my life. Elroy Edwin Frome, an infiltrator from Rome, a Freemason, a Jesuit plant in the Seventh-day Adventist, who is a, a General Conference secretary who was buried in Washington, D.C. in the Freemason plot there, died in 1974. I was born 1974. So by that time, six years after his death, the church voted Trinity. Why do they need to vote? Because it was not the belief of the church. They had to deal with it deliberately, dishonestly, and after a year, they produced documents about the Trinity, 1981. So this deceptive move is to justify themselves to be a part of the Worldwide Council of Churches, the ecumenical churches, which is, until today, some Adventists are being deceived that the Seventh Day is not a member, but the clear... The clear um, fact or truth is that the Seventh-day Adventist is part of that Trinitarian World Council of Churches. That is a fact in history. And millions of SDAs do not understand this. They claim, oh, we are not like the Catholic Trinity. Oh, we are Godhead. Seventh-day Adventists are clearly being snared by Satan here. Fooled. Dumbed by ignorance. So my advice is to pick up your Bible, read it from Genesis to Revelation, don't use the comments of the General Conference men, Biblical Research Institute, people. They are Trinitarian, solid, hardcore, Romish Trinitarians. They would say anything, they would do anything because they are being paid through this General Conference auspices. And so my advice is for you to pick up your Bible, get rid of all those opinions of men, read the Bible for yourself, and the, and the Spirit of God, His Holy Spirit will will guide you. The Spirit of Christ, which is the truth. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Given by His Father. God is truth. His Son is truth. Their Holy Spirit is their presence to guide us and comfort us, to comfort us and advocate for us to find the truth. This is a must today. Because if we're continually beholden and bounded by the creed, the church, the social strata, the, uh, the, the, the parties, and and the perks and the privileges and the potlucks, then we cannot find the truth. We are settled with what the, the leaders are saying. Oh, don't believe him or her. And so if we take what the leaders are saying and they we think that they are infallible like the Pope, then we will be surely led into the, per, the way of perdition. But if you're sincere and seeking the truth, pick up your Bible. I would recommend Textus Receptus. I would recommend King James Version Bible. That's it. You can open many Bible translations as you like, verse by verse. This takes time. And if you don't have time 
then you can listen to both sides. The way of evidence, the, the Trinitarians and the non-Trinitarians. Why are they so why are the Trinitarians so vehemently defending now their position? And they would go to the to the to the distance that they will say, all pioneers were wrong except Ellen G. White. That statement alone will make you think red flag. Because Ellen G. White and the pioneers were never disconnected. They were in harmony with the fundamental principles, not beliefs, of 1872, 1889, until the death of Ellen G. White in 1915. History will reveal, just like history reveals from the book of Revelation in the book of Daniel, what happened to the church. There was corruption. So the first corruption of the seventh day is to change the religion of the church by voting in 1980 eternity and publishing in 1981 their reasoning who Jesus Christ is. Because they think if you don't believe Trinity, you are a heretic, as fundamentally called by the Roman Catholic. Remember, the church was persecuted for 1,260 years in prophecy. During the papal supremacy, midnight for those who are seeking the truth and earnestly would like to know what the Bible says. So the doctrine of Trinity was forced for 1,260 years by threats of torture and death. So today, Trinity is the standard error. And many people think it's the standard truth, including me, for 40 plus years of my life. But God has mercy upon me. He, he allowed the uh, circumstances in my life, the painful circumstances to shape in my thinking and also my life and my heart so that I will investigate for my, myself and make my own decision and not just follow the conference puppet masters or those who are policy makers. Because that is exactly the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic from the Vatican General Conference is the Vatican of the Seventh-day Adventists. They have the same level of organization just like the Roman Catholics. In fact, when I was still a Trinitarian serving in the conferences, I was wondering about this and I made a video about this uh, hierarchy. It's the same. Pope, President in the Seventh-day Adventist, Cardinal, Cardinals, uh, the G GC Vice Presidents and all those GC Princes, uh, Archbishop, the, the Division Leaders, the the bishops, those are conference leaders, and the priests, the pastors, the conference pastors. Same level of organization copied from the Roman Catholic Church. Same Trinity worship. The only difference between the Roman Catholic and the Seventh-day Adventist is the Sabbath and the other watered-down doctrines that we have from the 1870 to 1889 fundamental principles. They change who God is in the Seventh-day Adventist. So I... I'm confident and I could say and I could claim that indeed the Seventh-day Adventist Church of today is corrupted. It's corrupt, doctrinally, biblically. And millions would defend this to the teeth, just like the Catholics, billions of Catholics will defend to the teeth, even to go to war for their belief. And I understand. And I understand what's happening. But my point why I'm doing this is for those who are sincere, emphasize, sincere, Seeking the truth. If you are not sincere in seeking the truth, you don't have time to read the Bible, then you believe what you believe and you will, you will justify yourself as, this is what I believe. And God will save me because this is what I believe. And Jesus Christ has to understand me. This is what I believe. Well, that is your belief. But the Bible has been given to us for thousands of years now. This book, the 66 books of the standard canon of the uh, received text of the Reformation of the Advent Pioneers, was banned, blocked, and destroyed. I mean, it was deliberately wanted to be obscured by the enemy, but still the Bible is here with us. And the reason why there are so many people who don't want to understand the Bible is they don't want to read and they don't want to understand and don't want to study. And if they study, they have their mindset on someone else's teachings. And they're using that someone else teaching, whispers of the enemy, to impose their own thinking on the text, which the text explains itself by another text. Scripture text with scripture text. 
And another reason why many SDAs could not come out is because their life, livelihood, and and their future is dependent on the church employment. And I understand that. I used to be one. But God has to has to allow me to, to be in pain for six years. And in the seventh year of my being away from the conference, God was ready for me to, to confront me with hard reality. I've been defending Trinity for for uh, for my uh, uh, in my ministry in my ministerial career but i realized i i made a fool out of myself explaining the trinity as solid liquid gas explaining trinity as uh, one tree root trunk and branches explaining trinity as a triangular shield of athanasius explaining trinity as uh, you know a body mind body and spirit I made a fool of myself and I repent from that uh, ignorance, sincere ignorance. And I did not read the pioneers' writings and teachings. But now I did read, read for the whole year in my ministry with the non, with the uh, returning to the uh, non-Trinitarian roots of, of my church, the Seventh-day Adventist non-Trinitarians. I realized for one year and a half at least, I realized I was duped and deceived, and I don't want to be duped and deceived again. So my authority, my, my final authority is the Bible. If I could not understand the Bible for myself, and I could not compare it with other scripture, then I am lost. But if I could compare it with scripture and come out like Matthew 28, 19, it's difficult because that has been my, I baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit thinking of Trinity as the church taught me. But that is not the case. Acts 2.38 is baptizing them in the name of Jesus. And so I conclude they could not be inconsistent. Matthew 28.19 and Acts 2.38, they are consistent. It's the name of Christ. God has been, God our Father has given His Son the authority. And Christ is the Father of humanity. Christ is the Son of God who became the Son of Man. Christ is the Holy Spirit, His presence in our lives, His holy life. That's why in Matthew 28.20, it says there, that was my difficulty before when I was studying the doctrine of Trinity in a formal class, master's level class. How can I make sense that Jesus is the one who will be with us? So there will be two, the Holy Spirit and Jesus. And I just did not bother because I received the Trinity. When, but when I read the original Spirit prophecy teachings, volumes one to four of Ellen G. White, over and over again, I keep on reading it. I realize Ellen G. White never taught a different spirit. She taught the living spirit of Christ, the presence of Christ. That is in Psalm 139, verse 7. And when Christ's spirit is there, the Father's spirit is there because the Father is the source given to his Son. The co-eternal philosophy is not from the Bible. Neither it is what Jesus revealed. He did not reveal himself as another God to be worshipped. He revealed his Father. He did not reveal himself. He revealed his Father. Every statement in the book of John, every statement in the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all of them, even though they are some synoptic, they, re, they are all in agreement that Jesus revealed his Father and he is the Son. The Trinity doctrine spiritualizes this, this teachings, this meaning, this truth, this truth. That's why I am convinced that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is corrupted. So now that's not only the doctrinal portion. They also water down the inspiration of Ellen G. White. They will use Ellen G. White's statement to substantiate their erroneous claim that Ellen G. White was a Trinitarian. That was what I was taught. I thought Ellen G. White was a Trinitarian. She was a Methodist Trinitarian and Sunday keeper and, in, and just like the rest of the Protestants during her time, 1840s. But clearly she rejected it as the light progressed. She rejected Sunday. She rejected Trinity. In all her writings, you can never find she endorsed or teach Trinity. Nor she mentioned God the Son, or mentioned first person, or mentioned second person, or God, God the Holy Spirit. The third person misunderstanding by Leroy Fromm's book, Evangelism, that's Leroy Edmonds from book 1946, Ellen G. White died 1915. Leroy Edmund Fromm endeavored to curate those three heavenly, the heavenly trio and, and heavenly uh the heavenly trio and heavenly powers statements. Sister White was not teaching a unity of three co-eternal 
co-equal persons. In that statement, she was referring to the living spirit of God, the living spirit of Christ, as the third, if you may understand the third. It was Christ's presence, living and powerful. Christ's spirit is not dead. And Christ's spirit is powerful. That's why heavenly trio, not another God, not another being, not another deity. It's Christ's living spirit. The unseen person is Christ walking in the streets of Avondale. That's the statement where uh, Leroy Edwin from curated it from or cut and in post in his subtitle, Leroy Edwin from subtitle Trinity in his book Evangelism. Deception, dishonesty, delusion. And those who came out in 1980, they were called heretics or they were they were not able to use the Seventh-day Adventist name because guess what the Trinitarians who voted did next? They copyrighted, trademarked the Seventh-day Adventist name. So I'm telling you, it's corrupted. Even the logo in 1997 was changed from the three angels uh, emblem to the present six stripes logo of a corporate world. Corruption in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Millions have, are not seeing this. And when they do Bible study, the pastors and preachers, they are there for making more proselytes or more converts, not sincerely studying the Bible, for the whole Bible or the whole understanding of who God is. That's why it's corrupted. Because they're after mass baptism and they're after increasing their tithe. They're after making the church look like it's full to the brim. Yet the minds and the people of those who are coming in the Seventh-day Adventist Church are not thoroughly given Bible study. I'm sorry, it's the truth. And I was guilty of that too because I was pressured of the tithes and baptism numbers during our, during our meetings, regular meetings, as I was contemplating the direction of the church. There are many sincere and earnest a seeker of truth in the seventh Adventist. And that's why this video, if you are listening, this, it, this is for you. Come out of her corrupted doctrines. Come out of her corrupted acceptance of the world. Just imagine uh, the many problems that are happening in the seventh day Adventist. And I understand you cannot come out because you are so comfortable and so happy with, with the fellowship. I tell you, eternal life is at stake. If, if you are taking, taking your eternal life lightly in this, end of times, then, then you are going to be unsearable or accountable to God our Father who committed all judgment to His Son, Jesus Christ. His Son, real Son. So you will be accountable and unsearable to all your to all those that you have been given. And if you ignore messages like this or reject messages like this or be offended and, and be angry and attack messages like this, telling you to study the Bible and you feel like you have arrived, you don't need to study the Bible, then I'm sorry. It's, it's so pathetic that there's no more point in, in reaching out to those who are unholy, who would like to continue to be unholy. But if you are righteous and holy, you will study the Bible again and again and again, trying to understand the truth. The truth is plain, pure, in the words of Christ, in the words of what we have read earlier, Revelation 18, verse 4, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her place. The seventh day Adventist of today is clearly, factually corrupted. Doctrinally and worldliness has already been worshipped in the seventh day Adventist church today. Yes, look around you. Bring your Bible, read it. The pastor's sermons are so smooth. Some of, their, some of the sermons are, are not even substantiated fully by the Bible. It's just their interpretation. They're spiritualized, how, no matter how sincere. Because I used to be a part of that. I used to, 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 to think of what story is funny so that I could relate it to the text. Those are smooth Smooth and heretical, truly unbiblical ways of studying. The biblical study is read the scripture, harmonize it throughout the scripture. And the spirit of prophecy, after you read the Bible, the spirit of prophecy will come alive to you. 
when you see the whole picture that what Sister White was saying was correct, she did not contradict the Bible. She magnified the Bible. That's why I love the Word of God. I, I read it every day. And so today I would like to give my advice, my two cents to all Seventh-day Adventists who are listening. Stop listening to your conference leaders for a while. Have a retreat. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Pray. Go to the text. And if you are, go to the internet. Search. Compare the, the past SDA with the present SDA. Compare the 1872 with the 1980. The fundamental principles and the fundamental beliefs. Compare the statements of Ellen G. White, three heavenly, three heavenly, uh, a heavenly trio, and then the whole. Who is the Holy Spirit in Ellen G. White's teaching? It's Christ. So the heavenly trio is the Father, the Son, and their Holy Spirits. That's the heavenly trio, their Holy Spirit, not someone else. Holy Spirit. You can also examine all of my videos if you are not. Uh, um, if you just you just listen to, to this message for the first time, I have more than 4,000, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, videos so that you can so you can compare. I am confident because I saw the, the other side. The, I saw the general conference teaching. I heard, I saw, I read, and I experienced, and I teach it myself. I practice. I never saw before the other side of the pioneers. I was biased. But now I saw the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist story, their writings, their, their practices, and their teachings. So I, I am able to understand, I am able to comprehend the Trinity position of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm able now to understand and... Uh, and see clearly the position of the Seventh-day Adventist pioneers. So you had to make a choice. And then I, I made a choice. I did make a choice. The original Seventh-day Adventism or the corrupted Seventh-day Adventism? I choose the original Seventh-day Adventist. That is the reason why this channel existed. I changed the channel's name because it fits what Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 literally says, here, O SDA, here, O Israel, spiritual SDAs, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Literally, one Lord God our Father. The God of Jesus, the Father of Jesus. Remember in the statement in the cross, my God, my God, Jesus said that? That's serious and solemn and real. His God is his Father, literally. The Trinity Doctrine destroys that statement of Jesus. Just imagine God the Son. Why would you call my God my God when you're also God the Son? Why would you call your Father when you are the same? You're, he's not your Father. You see the lies of the Trinity or slash triangular Godhead effect on Seventh-day Adventists worldwide, including me. Serious matter. This is an issue that must be confronted. That's why my channel is dedicated to expose this, agitate, and to, um, to make you think. But there are those who I understand who will defend the church blindly. And they will not even read or listen. They will not even have patience to go to 1 Corinthians 8, 6 and read it carefully. Or Psalm 139, verse 7, the text used by the pioneers to substantiate their fundamental principles. Or the uh, Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John saying that Jesus is the Son of God, they would say God the Son. That's opposite, polarized uh, view of who Christ is. Son of God is not the same as God the Son. Son of God is literally the Son of God. God the Son is just a title. of The, the Son is, is just a title. So the theologians that you are referring to from the Seventh-day Adventist Biblical Research Institute they are Trinitarians from Rome. They're drinking from the wine of the wrath of Babylon's fornication. What is Rome teaching? Sunday rest to worship Trinity. What is the Seventh-day Adventist teaching today? Sabbath rest to worship Trinity. That is incorrect. Sabbath rest is to worship the only true God, our Father. 
How do we know? Through His Son, Jesus Christ. So the question is, how about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the presence and power of the Father and His Son. Their Holy Spirit. I rest my case. And I pray and I advise you, if you are only sincere in seeking the truth, come out of the corrupted John Conference Corporate Church. It's like Titanic. They are so confident it will not sink, but it will sink. It may not be today. It will sink, according not to me, but to the prophecy of Ellen G. White. The structure will be swept away because they removed Jehovah and replaced it with Trinity. May God our Father have mercy upon us and His Son be gracious.